social media. We welcome you to our first Lenten service, um, which is Ash Wednesday. We're gathered here together today to praise the Lord. We know he is gracious to us. We know that he is compassionate. He's done mighty acts that no one else can accomplish. He's created the universe, the heavens, the earth, the mountains, the waters, all of the things that we see around us and each of us. And we were knit together in our mother's womb by an act of God and given life so that we could proclaim his holy name. He is trustworthy. His words are true. He does not go back on his word. He's righteous. He's very faithful to us. He's slow to anger. He upholds all who fall. He is there for you. When you stumble, when you trip, when you crash land on your face, the Lord is there for you. He satisfies the desires of every living thing. There is glory in his heaven that he has created so that when we are going to see him and be with him for eternity, it is so magnificent we can't even imagine. And he's already created all of that. He's rich in love. He is majesty. He is the great, the one, the only. His power exceeds any other power that you can imagine. He's done great deeds. He gives us from his abundant goodness. Praise the Lord our God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please join me in the call to worship. Blow the trumpet in Zion and let the people tremble. The day of the Lord is coming. The God of glory is here. Never has there been such darkness, and never have we imagined such glory. The rulers of all ages will triumph in greatness and power. This is our Lord, who is above all others. The earth quakes and the heavens tremble. The sun and the moon are darkened, the stars of the Lord shine. The Lord utters his voice, and all hosts are commanded. Truly, the day of the Lord is great. Who can endure it? Hallelujah! Only, Only God, God can endure it. Yeah. 
of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone I have sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But your desire, you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me of my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take away your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken or repentant heart, O God. Look with favor on Zion to help her. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the sacrifices offered in the right spirit. The burnt offerings and the whole burnt offerings, the bulls will again be sacrificed on your altar. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, here we are again, beloved, on uh, Ash Wednesday, 2023. It's good to see you all here this evening. There's nothing like... Uh, catching the flu or a cold to make you feel like you're still a human being. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so hopefully you're praying for me tonight. Hopefully you can hear me okay. If I start coughing and choking, just say, bless them, Lord, bless them, Lord. All right? All right. So Minister Chuck read us um, 
one of the scriptures that I was going to go to. And then he read another scripture that really talks about what it's like to be a human being. And I want to talk to us a little bit about that this evening, if you don't mind. I promise not to be too long. I know it's supposed to be a homily. <laughs> but uh, Pastor wasn't here on the weekend, so he gave me a little bit of latitude, all right? I want to draw your attention to the first, to the first part of Genesis. In the first part of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image, to be like us. They will reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and the livestock, and the wild animals of the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created, verse 27 says, human beings in his own image. Underline that. God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Now, when you flip over to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, which Minister Chuck read, it says, Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. Full stop. The Lord God formed the man. So in Genesis chapter 1, it kind of gives you the sort of the broad view, sort of like the preview, the trailer of the coming attractions, right? And then Genesis chapter 2 starts to get into the details of 20 minutes ago or an hour ago. Let me bring you up to speed as to what actually, how we got here. Don't you love those movies that start at the end and then the whole movie, they bring you up to what actually happened two days ago or whatever? So that's kind of Genesis 1 and Genesis chapter 2. All right? So Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his, this man's nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living person. So he formed the man, then he breathed into the man, and then the man became a living person. What did he say in Genesis chapter 1? He said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let them have dominion over everything that we have created on the earth. You see, in Genesis 2, 7, the creation of the first human being, the, the Hebrew word there is the word yisr, Y-I apostrophe S-E-R. That word means to form, to construct, to carve, to sculpt. What it's actually describing is the work and the actions of an artist or a sculptor or a potter, if you will. How many times have you seen that song? Thou, uh, we, I am the potter, thou art the... No, I'm saying that wrong. Thou art the, uh, the, the potter, I am the clay, right? Y'all got to help me out here. Y'all know the words, right? <laughs> Whenever he finds... Whenever we find this word, yes, sir, that's what it's connoting there. It's telling us that God formed, he sculpted... He was a master constructor. Whenever we find this specific term, it always refers, it always refers to, excuse me, forming something out of an existing substance. How many people have ever done any pottery in here? Anybody? One or two people. Okay, anybody saw the movie with uh, Demi Moore back in the day, right? Okay, you with me now? All right, and it's on the wheel, and they kid with how the wheel spins. And they use the water and the clay, and they put their thumbs in until they shape it into something, hopefully, right? Yeah. Okay. That's the image I want you to get. It's starting with a substance that has no form. It's something that does not look like what it is. Yeah. Might be an ashtray. Might be a pot holder. I don't know. It's going to be something. A plate, a dish, right? In this case, God is forming human life. From the elements, the substance of the ground itself. The Hebrew word here is apar, A apostrophe P A R, which refers to the dirt, the powder, or the, you guessed it, the ash. As we continue with Genesis' account, we see the account of the creation of the first man, that after being formed, man was still merely a clump of well shaped dirt. Kind of like me. I'm, I'm a nice clump of well shaped dirt. <laughs> Amen? Amen? That was too easy. <laughs> Although, just like a bust or a sculpture that may look very much like the person it's supposed to represent, it's still at its core in an animate representation made of the substance like stone or wood or metal or clay, 
but it's absent life. Right? It's what God did next that was extraordinary. It's what God did next that made all the difference in the world. He took this well-shaped clump of dirt that looked very much like him in his image and in his likeness, and he put what was inside of him inside of it. He breathed his ruach. That's the word for spirit. And the ruach of God, the spirit of God, hovered over the face of the deep. And the Lord said, let there be light. You know that part from the beginning of Genesis? That same ruach is what is in God. That same ruach means the Holy Spirit of God that he breathed into our nostrils and we became sentient, living, eternal spirits. No longer just very handsome, shaping clumps of clay, but living, breathing, animated, thinking, reasoning, Worshipping living beings. Amen? Amen? Amen. What he did would forever change who we are and what we would mean to this world. For it is through him that we are first and foremost made alive. Genesis 2 7 says that he breathed into man's nostrils of breath of life. Literally, God breathed life from within him, in, in himself into this clump of earth and immediately it transformed it into a living creature. An eternal soul. Yes, beloved, all of life originates with God. And this is what Genesis account is testifying to today. So don't waste time trying to debate Pastor Warren about the Big Bang Theory or the evolution theory or whatever theory you hold to of the origin of life. The Bible says that all life originated with God, especially human life, which is unique among his creation because it did not begin with his word, it began with his breath. Pastor, how can you say that? We all know that he holds up everything by the word of his power, and all things came into being by the power of his word. But that's not what the scripture says about man. He formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into us the breath of life, and then we became a living being. We became alive because God breathed in us. Talk about CPR. <laughs> now don't get it twisted. He did say, he, was, he did tell us in the first chapter, as I said in the previews, he did tell us what he was going to do. He did say, let us make man in our image and our likeness. But don't you know that was for our benefit? The trailer of the movie is to entice you to watch the movie. The trailer is not the movie, it's the coming attraction. Genesis chapter 1 is giving you a synopsis of what God intended to do with man. He intended to create man in his image and in his likeness to have rulership and lordship of the creation that he made to look like him out of what he made here on earth. His intent for creation was that mankind would be the pinnacle and ruler of his creation. But to effectuate his plan for man, unlike all the others he created, by simply calling them into existence, go back and read the record. All he said was, and God called, and God saw, and God made. Let the dry land appear. Let the firmament appear. God was speaking all throughout Genesis. And then when he got to the end, he said, wait, I want to practice my sculpting tactics. I want to get my hands in the dirt. And I want to make this one really, really special. And you wonder why they say, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that you visit him? Did he not make us a little bit lower than the angels just for a little while? There's something unique about us in all of creation. To effectuate his plan, he forms us out of the dust of the ground. He took extra special care by forming us with his holy hands, placing his holy lips upon the dirt that he formed in his image, and he breathed his Holy Spirit into this dirt. Yes, beloved, human life began when the personal holy breath of God began to breathe and course through our lungs. Without God, we would simply 
be a lump of clay and nothing special. Did you know that the name Adam directly comes from the Hebrew word Adam, A apostrophe D A M, which literally means man, and that that same word is the same word as Adama, A D A M A H, which means of the ground. Did you know that? Yes, beloved, God personally designed, shaped, and intricate, every intricate detail of man, from our hair to our eyebrows, to our eyelashes, to our fingernails, and everything in between. When we consider this, we must believe what the psalmist in 139 verse 14 says, I will praise you, O God, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I know this very well. God was intentional, fashioning exactly what he set out to make, according to the book of Genesis, to form the first man. And he said in Genesis 131, and it's good. It's very good. Amen? Amen. So by the time we get to Genesis 3, what is euphemistically called the fall of man, or the fall of Adam and Eve, when they ate the forbidden fruit, it's hard to fathom, actually, that we could have fallen so far from what God had intended. But truth be told, this is still true of Christians today. In Christ, we have the ability to be so much of what God is shaping and forming and intentionally breathing on us the breath of life every single day that you go, that is God's breath in your lungs. Did you know that? Every day when you go, that is God's ruach in you. Even if you have to go, it's still God's breath. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do you remember what happens after they ate? Their eyes were opened. So what does it mean that their eyes were opened after they ate? Were they closed before? Were they walking around blind like little, little puppies or something? The puppies come out of the womb. Puppies are blind. I think they come out of the womb. Somebody help me. Who has puppies? Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, beloved, that's not the case. There's something about eating the fruit that opened the eyes of Adam and Eve. Not their physical eyes, their spiritual ones. Right? Right. And there's something about eating the fruit that gave them, hear me, new awareness. Something that awakened them spiritually and brought them to a new level of consciousness separate from God. Because before, they were basking and walking in the glory and the air and the walk of God. And then all of a sudden, there was a foul smell. You ever walk into a room and there's a foul smell? Say amen, wise. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, what was that? It's as if sin changed the odor in the garden. There's something about eating the fruit that changed Adam and Eve and changed who they were. But the key is, this consciousness was apart from God. Apart from the breath of the Holy God that had filled them with all goodness and his greatness. That's true of us as well. The breath in them have become defiled by sin. Sinning against a holy God. They can no longer hold on to his holy breath. They can no longer hold on to his holy life. And they can no longer remain in his presence. And now, absent his holy presence, they become cut off from the source of life itself, which is God. And they were now doomed to return to dust where they were before God breathed into their nostrils. The breath of life. Genesis 3.19 says it like this. By the sweat of your brow, like I'm sweating right now, you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you shall return. In other words, you were given a place to rule above the animals, and now you have become just like one of the other created creatures, living out your life, scrounging in the dirt until you expire. As we take ashes today, this is what we should be able to remind ourselves. But beyond this, we hope and rejoice 
Because God did not leave us in this state. Amen? Amen. He sent us Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, into the world to pay our penalty and to conquer our enemies, sin, death, and the grave. He made it possible for the dust, the dust, us, to live again for all eternity if we put our trust in him and the sacrifice he made on this cross. So maybe we fail or we fall into sin like Adam and Eve did, but we certainly know good and evil like Adam and Eve did. But they saw it all, but we've seen the end. And we know that the end is better than the beginning. Amen? Amen. But praise be to God, for he has already had a plan. Even before we sinned, he had a remedy to redeem his created image, to redeem his created likeness of man before the foundation of the world. For as it says in the scripture, before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. Through this man, that is God made flesh, he intended to live, rule, and reign with him forever. As you receive ashes today, remember the sacrifice of this man, Jesus Christ, who conquered living as a human being like you and I, maintaining the Holy Ruach, Holy Spirit of God, within him, and giving us his examples of those who believe in him. Hear the testimony of St. Paul as we close in Acts chapter 17. He is God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples. And human hands cannot serve his needs, for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything, and he satisfies every need. From one man, he created all nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and when they should fall. He determined their boundaries. His purposes was for all nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way towards him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us, for in him, hear me, we live and breathe and have our being. And some of you, your own poets here, you're speaking to the Greeks here, we are his offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by the craftsmen of man from gold, silver, or stone. God overlooked these people's ignorance about such things in earlier times, but now he commands everyone to repent of their sins. Turn to him, for he has set a day for judging the world of justice by the man he has appointed and proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. And he is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Play something soft for me, please. Yes, Lord, we are grateful to you. For truly, God, we were formed from the dust of the ground. But I know that the scriptures said that you would not allow your Holy One to know decay. In three short days, you raised him from the dead, confirming to us who hold to his testimony that we too would be raised from the dead. It does not matter how we leave this place, whether we leave by fire, by water, or some other form or fashion. On that day of judgment, the archangel will go forth with the voice of the trump, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And those of us who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet with Jesus in the air, and there shall we ever be with you and all the saints forever. But let these ashes today remind us that we are dust. We are worthless without the infilling of your Holy Spirit. Fill us now, this day. And as we move through the time of Lent this year, renew our confirmations in you. Show yourself to us in ways that we have not seen you before. Open the ears and the minds and the hearts of the people to receive your spirit and to be led by your spirit now and always. Because it says in your word, they that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to do our ashes on this evening. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to have you all stand. The ministers are going to start on my left here. They're going to serve the ashes on this side, and then they're going to have you file out this way. Come forward, receive the ashes, and file back that way to your seats. And then they're going to serve you guys last on this side. All right?
strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. To me, Jesus, faith in all. All to me, my own. Sing and let the crimson stain be washed in white as snow. Season and throughout this Lenten season, I bless you with His name, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you.